Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the Paradigm AI Smoke Woods and Irons from Callaway. The RBC Heritage starting tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Golf Channel. Todd Lewis has more with the world number one. You can easily say that Scotty Scheffler's ship has come in, or maybe he's reached new heights after winning the Masters. We sure have. We're coming to you from atop the iconic lighthouse at Harbor Town that overlooks the 18th hole at Harbor Town Golf Links. And Scotty Scheffler will be on the course Thursday for round one of the RBC Heritage. He had an interesting Sunday night after winning the Masters. He landed in his hometown of Dallas. He and his pregnant wife Meredith along with his swing coach Randy Smith his agent Blake Smith and four close friends were driving and noticed a tavern was open at 1 30 in the morning so they all decided to stop go inside and have a celebratory drink and the few lucky patrons that were inside had a once in a lifetime moment to take pictures with the two-time Masters champion well after a day and a half of rest and taking care of Meredith Scotty Scheffler boarded a plane and landed here on Hilton Head Island Tuesday night and on Wednesday played in the Pro-Am. He's still riding high after the Masters victory. Yeah, I think the last two days at home were nice. Monday was a nice day. Got to relax at home, not do a whole lot. Um, yesterday was a bit busier having to pack up and stuff to head over here. But yeah, I got some rest and excited for the week. Is it easy for you to manage the emotions of winning the Masters and getting ready for this tournament? Yeah, I think I think emotionally it can be a bit challenging. Uh, mentally, I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a bit fatigued at the moment. But um, you know, I didn't I didn't come here just to, to play golf for four days. You know, I came here to compete and, and have fun and um, try to continue what I've been doing. Um, yeah, like that's, that's something I said inside earlier. It was like I didn't didn't leave my pregnant wife at home to come here for some sort of ceremony. You know, I right. came here to play in a tournament and compete. And my prep work will be a little bit different, but um, yeah. Is this the best you've ever played in your in your opinion? Gosh, I don't really know. I, I went through a pretty good stretch there in 22. Right. Um, it's hard to tell. I think I've been I've been managing myself on the golf course the last month, month and a half. I think as good as I have in a long time, um, which has been which has been nice. I feel like that's something that I wanted to work hard on in the off season is, is kind of managing my emotions and not getting too high or too low. And I feel like a, this year I've done a pretty good job of that. Yeah, I think you're doing okay. Um, you come to this golf course, which is obviously a, a unique kind of unicorn golf course on the PGA Tour. In your opinion, when it fits your game, what do you feel like you need to do well here? Well, this golf course I think is so much fun to play just because you have to control your ball really well. For all the for all the people in the game that don't love watching distance and they want to, you know, dial the ball back and do all these things to make the game more difficult, need to come here and do a, like a case study on this golf course because this is a place where you have to control your ball, you have to hit different kinds of shots. All different kinds of shots off the tee, all different kinds of shots going into the green. I think it's really fun to play. Um, you know, they have a lot of the sandy areas and, and not long rough, and so when you do get into the trees, it leaves some opportunity to hit some cool shots, and I think it's a really fun place to play. They have a really fun jacket. It's not green, but would you like to have one of those in your closet as well? I, I wouldn't mind it, that's for sure. <laughs> Scheffler has not seen all 18 holes of Harbortown Golf Links. He played only a nine hole pro-am today, the back nine, but he said he got enough feel today on how the course is moving and it should not be a problem for him in round number one on Thursday. By the way, he finished tied for 11th in his tournament debut last year. And I mentioned his pregnant wife, Meredith, earlier. Well, she's due in less than two weeks and Scotty Scheffler is still adamant. If he gets the call, regardless of where he is in the tournament, He's leaving Hilton Head Island, heading for Texas for the birth of his first child. The season's first major on the LPGA Tour is this week. Catch live first round coverage of the Chevron Championship. That starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Well, when it comes to major championships, they just go hand in hand with history. And so often, players gear their entire schedules around these big events of the year, making sure that their games are exactly where they want them to be for the major championships because they just mean that much. Well, this week's Chevron Championship, history extends beyond just hoisting the trophy on Sunday as there's a number of players here in the field that have a chance to make history of their own here over the next several days, starting with Nellie Corda. She is looking to win for a fifth consecutive time on the LPGA Tour and join a short list that includes uh, just Annika Sorensam and Nancy Lopez. I asked Nellie Corda earlier this week what history means to her and her place in it, and she said she's really just been so wrapped up in the present she hasn't been able to give it much thought. Well, Lydia Coe 
though, she is another player here this week chasing history as well. With her win at the season opener this year, she earned one more point to put her within just one point of qualifying for the LPGA Tour Hall of Fame. She's just 26 years of age, and should she win on Sunday, she would become the youngest to qualify for the LPGA Tour Hall of Fame. As if you win a major championship, you would earn two points, and that would put her over the finish line and into the hall. Now, a victory would mark a second Chevron title for Co. It would be a third career major victory and a 21st win on the LPGA Tour. It would also be an emotional week for So Yun Yu as she closes a chapter of her own history here this weekend. Yu took to social media just a few weeks ago to announce that this would be her only event of the 2024 season and that she will be retiring from the LPGA Tour. Yu competing out here for 12 seasons. She's a six-time winner on the LPGA Tour, a two-time major champion, and a former world number one. And she said she started contemplating retirement back during COVID when she spent nine months at home uh, in Korea and really just enjoyed having more of a life away from golf, away from competing, having to be on the road and traveling. And she said it was in 2022 that she decided that 2023 would be her final season. So she's really just out here this week to say uh, thank you, to say goodbye, and to be able to reflect on her career. Of course, I do have a lot of regrets moment, you know. Um, what if I hit 7 iron instead of 8 iron? What if I hit a little bit more, like, aggressive instead of being, you know, um, being a chicken? Um, but <laughs> uh, I know <laughs> all of the moment I did my best, so I don't think I can regret um, that kind of stuff. But only one regret is um, I don't think I really enjoy the moment, like, you I mean, live that moment, because... Even after I won a tournament, only thing I could think of was like how I'm going to keep this title. How, how can I win another one? And then even when I become a number one in the world, I was more busy to thinking about how I'm going to keep this position. I just don't want to be second or third. I want to be number one in the world forever. So I feel like I just couldn't enjoy that moment. Um, also, after I uh, announced my uh, re retirement, a lot of people have been reaching out to me and then tell me, like, you've been having a wonderful career. And then that was the time I genuinely consider my career as a good career. And then I was, first time ever, I feel like I, proud of, I was very proud of myself. And I wish, without people telling me you're good at golf, I wish I was able to talk to myself, I'm good at golf, and that I was be kind to myself. So I think the, those two are the regrets that I have. So, Yan, a, a lot of athletes take a long time trying to figure out when is the right time to start a new chapter. What made you know that this was the right time? Um, first one was travel aspect. I was just so tired of traveling, and then I feel so grounded at home. And then um, I started to think about, like, when is the happiest moment in my life? Literally, right after I wake up from my own bed, when I go to the kitchen to make a coffee, that's my happiest moment. <laughs> and then, to be honest, you know, at the hotel room, is not really easy to do. Um, and then second one, um, people might kind of think this is really funny, but I was never good with the competition. I, I don't think I'm born with the competitiveness. You know, like some players just naturally really enjoy the competition. Like, of course, when I'm in contention and when I have to compete, I did my best. And then, of course... Maybe people were able to see the laser in my eyes, you know, to, you know, to make a putt or something. But every time after I compete, I was so exhausted. And then I started to feel like uh, competing is just not my thing. Um, I guess because I loved golf so much, I was able to tough it out. But I feel like I have no energy to compete to compete with anybody. <laughs>